Hello everybody, Stack AI CSV file tutorial. Let's get into it. All right, so once you're in Stack AI, you wanna to go to templates and we're gonna go ahead and click on spreadsheet Q&A to save us a little bit of time and follow the uh, default template. So I just want to remove the notes first. So just the structure is like the structure the same with Airtable, right? So you have an LLM, which is responsible to generate a formula or a SQL query in this case. And we have a shared memory, which shares memory between these two LLMs, pretty useful feature. Right. The final LLM, which is generating the response, right? So let's go ahead and start with the CSV file itself. So in order to make your CSV file in a suitable format for the LLM to be actually used it, you need to make some changes. By changes, I mean you need to clean it up a little bit. You wanna make sure there are no spaces like this. You wanna sure, and there are no special characters. Uh, you wanna sure there are not empty columns, stuff like that. Like we have a special character right there, and these two columns are empty. So I'm just going to delete both of them so you want to make sure that you do basic data preparation for your language model to use okay once you got rid of spaces and special characters and stuff you don't need to get rid of duplicates but you just need to do basic cleanup and then the other thing is i would need to rename the spreadsheet as well as the worksheet to my table and i'm going to explain you guys why in just a second yeah. just want to go ahead and download the csv file table if you see table name is by default my table and unfortunately is not even editable i think so it would be super nice if we can edit this table name for the schema, you will automatically see the schema uh, popping up right here. So what you can do is just copy the schema and it in, in like a notepad to get a suitable format for the LLM, which is going to be something like this. So for the system section, we have the same from the default template, but for the column schema name and column type, and then you just want to make sure they're exactly match. So we're good here. And then for the conversation history, we have the memory and for use and just we want to leave it as it is. So one little tip about system and prompt section based on what uh, Stack AI support told me prompt is for a section that you put the variables in, right? Uh, like user question is a variable. It changes from one conversation to another. Or, but for the, in the system section, you put everything else in the system section, right? So that's, that's, a, that's a general rule of thumb. It's useful to have. And for this one, I want to also have the GPT-4 model. And for the system, I just want to write something along these lines that you're a helpful AI assistant. You will receive a question from the user you need to answer. From a CSV table, you receive a SQL query that you need to execute to get the answers. And, and then we have in the prompt section, like I said, we want to put all the, all the variables, right? Which in this case, they are SQL query, CSV database, and the user message. Some final checkups before testing the thing. Let's see if the memory is on. Yes, so we want to have the memory enabled for sure. And uh, same for this one. And for, I just want to increase the, I just want to turn on unstructured and for chunk length, I'm just going to increase it a little bit. So chunk length is this language models break sentences into chunks to better understand them. So that's like a max length of each chunk and chunk overlap basically gives uh, context to the whole thing. So chunk overlap is where two chunks are overlapping, basically. Give it a test. Let's see if it works. Let's go back to our CSV file and let's uh, question like photos, like how many photos we have. 
how many photos we have received in total. Yeah, 351 photos, let's see. So you ask it how many people have submitted a photo and the feedback. So we have a feedback column right here, which not so many, and we have photos, but let's see. We have 46. Uh, one other thing, guys, like as a bonus, I'd like to mention. So if you notice down here on the output or input, we have a new section added called triggers. So for the input, you have this really cool one sort of flow every hour, week, or month. So that goes out automatically. If um, received an email, you extract the contact the content and it goes actually to your input. Same with type form. I have already a tutorial covering this one. And for outputs, if you go on the action section, you have this cool one Zapier webhook. So this basically allows you to send your output anywhere, right? So if I remove that one, and if I just put this one as the final output, you just need to go to Zap here. You simply, I have already this Zap created right here. So we are sending the output to PDF Monkey. Um, I mean, this is a slightly different setup, but just showing you, you just go and create a Zap trigger. You just select catch hook. It gives you a URL. And you just paste the URL right here in the Sack AI. You click publish and you are good to go. Basically that. So, and I have these extra steps. So, because we are just formatting the input with Zapier formatter, which is really powerful to change formats in the output from Sack AI and then send it wherever you want to send it over 5,000 apps. So I hope you guys found value in this video. If you did so, please like, subscribe, and let me know what you think.